Hello, hello. So, um, in the previous video I had a, a zero falling out of this piece of aluminium and I already told you it should not be possible to cut, here, this zero, <laughs> to cut through the aluminium. I thought, you know what, I'll do a uh, test at full power and this is the result. So, uh, yeah, it can cut this mylar with 9 micron aluminium. Uh, and the only reason why it is possible is because of this black paint. I tried it without any paint, no way it's gonna happen. You see like an outline and if you go over it with your finger it's just smooth aluminium again. <laughs> so it didn't do anything. When you add some paint you can cut it from I believe 170 in power already. Well, of course, it depends on the speed, but I cut this with full power, but I did another test with nine mic or seven micron aluminium foil, made one side black, as you can see, and then uh, tried to cut it. As you can see, that's possible. And I did it at 2000 millimeters a minute, which is not even super duper slow. And at 200 from 255 power. So yeah, this dual uh, diode laser is rather uh, hefty. So here you can see an outline of one I did without paint. And now you can see an outline and if I do this, well, you can still see an outline, but on the other side, it will be completely normal foil. So it reflects so much of the light back into the laser, which probably is not very good, that it doesn't cut. You add some black material on one side and you cut it. You can cut through it if you want. Uh, now people ask many times, oh, do you have a laser or something to make those coils? <laughs> I tried, of course, but what it's of no use because the coil, you know, comes free and it just moves up and then gets burned and the thing gets really hot. So there's not an easy method of keeping it on the plate and cutting it. And also, I don't see what the benefit is. Uh, yeah, then I got back to one of my far more earlier ideas that might not look as smooth as this. And that's mostly because this is a pre-laminated foil and probably because etching looks better. But yeah. I made this just with a plotter. But what I did, and I have done this before, It's the same coil, except this is a little bit longer by the looks of it, and that is has to do with the settings of the laser. I increased, well, anyhow, they're the same but a little bit longer, and this has 9 micron aluminium and this has 7, so this has a higher impedance, although it's even uh, smaller. But I did it the same way, so instead of making... Uh, like space in between tracers. Now I just did it as the laser did, but then with a blade. And I add up far more weight on the blade than you usually should to cut through the foil. What happens is the aluminium foil will like smoosh outwards and create a space in between the traces. Um, it also has to do with the type of aluminium foil I use. It's aluminium foil with paper on one side. So I put the paper side on the cutting mat. So there is like a barrier between the aluminium and the cutting mat that is really easy to cut paper. So the blade will sink in deeper into the aluminium creating this space in between the traces. Now if we look at the light, then you can see that there is room between the traces and it's even smaller than the room between the edge traces. Maybe it's 
easier visible on the other side? I don't know. So it is not visible from here, I think. Almost not visible. I said this before and usually uh, if I watch the video back it is visible. No, I need some backlight. God damn it. Yeah, so you can see there is space in between traces. And I made a very ugly one. And why? I made three and one very ugly one, although not on purpose. But I did. Is because I wanted to know, is this a fluke? And is it like shorted out somewhere? Because that would be a bummer. And if so, then it, this whole idea is not useful. So this one, don't have the meter in the image. Maybe I can. So this one is... 0 0.1 ohm. This one is... 0 0.1 ohm. Now the really fucked up looking one is 0 0.1 ohm. Is it shorted to the surroundings? Apparently yes. Is it shorted to this one? Hell yeah. So it is shorted out here, but it does do the complete coil. So <laughs> it's not shorted out overall, it's usable, but here I think I shifted the surrounding aluminium because this foil is a little bit uh, screwed it might be touching somewhere but it's funny that even the coil itself does function or did at least after I fucked it up no, still 6.1. But uh, yeah, so it's not a fluke. I could play with the um, weight on the cutter, increasing or decreasing the space in between traces. And it's a combination of having more space and a more crappier looking cut, or less space and a better looking cut. Because these knives are not meant to be um, pushed so hard into like the cutting meth but it's really cool it is possible you see it looks cool and it looks usable a matter of fact it is usable so this is already six ohms it's a pretty tiny coil I think I wonder if I can get the trace width even smaller or even smaller smaller would be cool so yeah once more I tried etching stuff I really hate the fact that my fingers smell to uh, ferric chloride like for two days and yes you could use gloves but uh, there's always some moment that I don't I also uh, fucked up one sweater because I thought it was working quite clean but there is one stain so that one is done for or at least I will never get uh, will never be able to remove that stain at least I don't know of anything that can remove those stains uh, yeah and your whole kitchen gets dirty and it's just it's just dirty 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 and you have to spray stuff and you have to do this and you have to do that all kinds of stuff potentially going wrong so I wanted to try this once more and yeah maybe this is the way to go I already liked plotting better but the biggest problem is that the space in between traces you have to weed out by hand and if it's so small it's not possible to weed it out or it's not able to cut it and it just becomes one crap and the whole coil is fucked now with this method it's still able to make a coil while the space in between traces is really tiny I don't know how tiny I don't have a scope or something. Uh, well, I actually do have some sort of camera thingy. Well, I don't really mind. I don't really care. I mean, it's very tiny. 
I mean, it's the width of a blade pushed in a little bit further into the uh, aluminium than normal. So, mm. and these points of those blades are pretty sharp and small. So yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty uh, well stoked. I wouldn't say stoked, but surprised that it, this kind of thing works. Now it would be nice if I make a vacuum table to hold it when cutting. That would be cool, maybe next up. But I should use this more often for time corners. So very small, but still 12 minutes long update. With not a lot of information. Oh, for comparison, this is the Piega. That's insane small. You see those traces? That's ridiculous. This looks like huge in comparison. <laughs> so this might be like half a millimeter, maybe even less. And this is around one millimeter trace. But uh, I'll adjust it, see if we can get this smaller, because that's funny. Just because we can. Oh, already six ohms, but yeah, uh, I could make a um, coil with this kind of method for a headphone that might be able to reach high enough to be, you know, driven by a normal amplifier. I mean, if this is six ohm, if I can get the traces a little bit smaller, I could reach like seven or eight ohms. And if you make, the, of course, the membrane bigger, yeah. It might not reach like 60 ohms like some headphones do, but I bet I can Im improve on higher resistance if I wanted. I might try that next up. I have no use for it, but it's always nice to know what you're what you're capable of doing. Can we go smaller? Yes, we can. As a comparison. You can't even see it. <clears throat> That's 0 0.6 coil. An even smaller distance in between. So this is possible, but it becomes more and more tricky to get it from the cutting math. Focus your shit. So, um, yeah, 0 0.6 millimeter. <laughs> so this has almost half the trace width of this one and almost twice as much coil, sort of. Sixteen point six. You would imagine it would be um, twice the. Is that true? No. Oh no, no, no. So it becomes twice the impedance because the trace width is almost half, and then because it has far more coil, it's also almost double. Not exactly, but. So that's why we get 16.6 .6 instead of 6 ohms. So normally if everything would be equal, it would quadruple. But that's not the case. But 16.6 .6 is quite decent. It's really high. It's the highest tiny coil I ever made. Uh oh, now they're stuck. So I used a 40 degree cutter for this one, 60 uh, would rip the foil in the end. So 45 did work, I'm not sure if I put enough weight on it, because you should add a little bit more weight on a 45 instead of 60, because this will go deeper, because it's more pointy of a cutter. But 
this follows the curves nicer without ripping. So I could play with this adding a little bit more weight. I did a little bit more weight than this one and I slowed the speed. I made two coils and they cut both pretty nicely so I think it could be repeatable. The biggest problem so far I had is getting these tiny coils off the cutting mat without one trace being left behind because that will fuck up the spacing, tracer spacing. In this case it worked out, the other coil, since I did two perfect coils, I did not make it. I tried heating up the cutting mat because the temporary sticky glue on the cutting mat does not like heat and this captain can endure some heat and the adhesive on the captain can endure some heat. So there's room to play. Uh, but yeah, if it could be cut on a vacuum table, which I doubt, because I think the stickiness is more aggressive than a vacuum table, but if a vacuum table did work, then removing this is uh, really easy. You just disable the vacuum and pull it off without it sticking everywhere. Just an idea, but this could be very interesting for headphone duty because I cannot, there is no way I can etch this small because the laser beam seems to make even bigger uh, creates a bigger beam than this is and it's really not visible, I cannot even by eye it's really hard because it's reflecting but there is spacing in between, the only thing it shows it's like this. There. So that's how it looks. So there is spacing in between. <laughs> Not much. And you can see it changes a little bit at the ends and that's because I had a hard time getting it off the cutting mat. So cool. So there you go. Zero for the laser and etching. One for plotting, again.